Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're having a good day. We're gonna do another collaboration between Alessandro Boncio and myself. And Alessandro Boncio's friend, uh, Rafael Rao, made this really great animation flying through a landscape, and we wanted to try to replicate this. So if you look at this scene, there's basically two ways that you could approach this. One is to make a giant scene with a lot of polygons and fly a camera through it. And the other way that you could do this is to make a landscape that actually is coming towards the camera and it's sort of looping and it's feeding itself sort of like a conveyor belt towards the camera. And that way you can have it loop and you can also have a lot less geometry to work with. So we're gonna try to do that today. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is add a landscape object and we'll make a few changes to the landscape object. We're gonna make it a bit narrower, maybe 400 by 200 and we're going to increase the segments so that we have quite a bit of uh, resolution here. And let's change the scale so that we have a lot more going on. All right, we're also going to flip this on the orientation to minus Y, so it's going down, because it's going to be stuck on a conveyor belt and looping around, so it's okay if it's upside down. And the last thing we're gonna do is make this very, very wide. So we're going to make this actually 50,000, so super, super wide. And we're going to make a spline that this is going to wrap on like a conveyor belt. So let's go to a spline here and we'll add a rectangle spline. And we're gonna make that 50,000 in width as well. So it matches 50,000. And let's go to the edges and make this more like a conveyor belt. We're gonna make these rounded edges. So if we click on rounding, we're gonna make that 200 centimeters. So have this nice uh, kind of round conveyor belt. All right, so now we need to wrap this landscape across this spline, and we're gonna do that with this spline wrap. So hit Shift C to bring up your command dialog, and let's type in spline wrap and hit enter. And in that spline wrap, we need to feed it that rectangle spline, and we'll put that rectangle spline right here, and then we'll take the spline wrap and put it inside of the landscape. All right, so our orientation is off, and then also as you zoom out, you'll notice that it's clipping all of this off because it's such a large object. So if you hit Command D, it'll bring up your project settings, and under View Clipping, you can change it from medium to large, and then it's not gonna clip that off. All right, so let's play with the orientation of this spline wrap, and like the previous one, let's change this to minus Y, and that's gonna get us most of the way there, but we do have to rotate this spline wrap, and I've done this before, so I know that uh, we have to change this to minus 90, so we'll go minus 90. All right, so our landscape is now feeding along this spline like a conveyor belt, and we can animate that in the spline wrap with our offset. So if we change our offset, you can see that's working perfectly. So we're gonna go to the beginning of our scene here, and we'll make a keyframe for zero. We'll go to 90 frames, and we'll make that 100. And the nice thing about this effect is that this is now a perfect loop. If we go to this keyframe and then go to the first, it's a perfect loop, which is really great. It's a very handy technique for doing that. All right, so let's make these furrows a little bit more obvious just so we can see what's going on here. All right, so a couple things with this technique is that you're gonna want a camera that's pretty low to the ground, and you're also gonna wanna add a lot of motion blur. Motion blur and depth of field is really gonna sell this effect. And also one other thing we can do is put some landscapes in the background, and I'll throw those on here. All right, so um, depth of field is gonna add a lot. Motion blur is gonna add, add a lot. Another thing that we can do is add some rocks or some custom objects onto here, but how are we gonna make them stick onto this geometry? Well, it's pretty easy. Let's just add a cube, um, just kind of as an example, because it's really fast, but you can put rocks or plants or cactus or whatever you want on here. So we're gonna add this to our scene using a cloner. Put the cube inside the cloner, and we're gonna change the mode of the cloner to object mode. And for the object we want this to stick onto, we're gonna drag our landscape. And now we can see that we have our cubes stuck onto that landscape. Now the only problem is if we zoom out here, let me place a camera just so we can come back to it if we want to. If we zoom out here, and let me also turn off the background so things are a little bit speedier. You can see that we have our conveyor belt here. And the problem with this technique might be that these cubes are kind of rotating around the conveyor belt and popping on. And it's kind of obvious if you don't have motion blur and depth of field. If you have those on pretty heavily, it's probably not gonna be a problem. But one thing we could do if we wanna make it a little bit less obvious when these pop on is that we can add a plane effector. So let's go to MoGraph Effector Plane Effector. And let's make sure that is in our cloner. And in the plane effector, we can go to the fall off and let's add a box field and let's scale up our box field quite a bit, and let's put it towards the back here. 
And what we can do now is change the scale parameter. So we can turn off position, go to scale, and we'll turn on uniform scale and go to minus one. And then if we move this plane effector around, you can see that we're scaling on these boxes towards the end here. So now what's gonna happen is as the boxes come around the conveyor belt, they're gonna slowly kind of scale on and they're not gonna pop on as abruptly. And if we go to our main camera view, you can see that it's a lot less jarring. And then one last thing you can do if you want to, if you're putting rocks in here, you might wanna go ahead and throw in a, a random effector, go into your rotation, play with the random. Anything you can do to randomize your objects is gonna make it look really nice. All right, so that's the basic technique of setting up sort of a conveyor belt style animation with things coming towards the camera and then being able to loop seamlessly. Hope you guys found that useful and we'll talk to you next time. Ciao.